Welcome to the American Dream, a show that started right here in San Diego, America's finest city, that now spans positive media all across the country, real stories in real neighborhoods. Hi, I'm your host, Craig Sewing, and here's the American Dream. Welcome to the American Dream, a real show, not a reality show. The real estate, the lifestyle, the culture. It's not just about what you're living in, but the community you're gonna live in. High rise, luxury living. People are the vehicle, people are the connection, people are the expansion. Helping folks just like you find your dream home. It just never disappoints. Real stories in real neighborhoods with real experts. The opportunity to achieve our biggest goals and aspirations. It's the American dream. Julie Darkangelo, real estate expert and host for American Dream TV. Today I'm in my hometown of Wakefield, Massachusetts. I'm at Lake Quantipowit and I'm going to show you around. Let's go take a look. I'm here at the Festival by the Lake with Brian Fox, chairman of the Wakefield Independence Day Parade Committee. Hi, Brian, how are you today? I'm great, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about the festival? Sure, today's the 42nd anniversary of the Wakefield Festival by the Lake. The craft fair and the tables that are set up here help fund Wakefield improvements throughout the year. Great, great. I know you and your committee are working on the 4th of July parade for this year. Can you tell us a little bit about the history and significance of that parade? Sure, it's our 101st anniversary and our 76th overall parade this year. Uh, it's going to be really, really big <laughs> coming out of COVID, so it should great. be a good one. Great. That's great to hear. How about a theme? Have you come up with a theme this year? Yeah, so this year's theme is going to be Under the Big Top. It's a circus-based theme with a lot of jugglers and still walkers and other circus acts. Great. Sounds great. This is the 4th of July parade is one of the biggest parades in this area. Brian and his committee work tirelessly on it year round. So thank you very much for all that you do. Thank you. It's the biggest parade, the biggest 4th of July parade in the state every year. And we're, um, we're hoping everyone comes out to it. Now I'm in downtown Wakefield in front of a local favorite, the bread shop. As you continue down Main Street, you find many other local businesses, including Farmland, Public Kitchen, Brothers Deli, and Cravings Ice Cream. Now we're just outside of Wakefield Center at the train station, which sits 10 miles north of Boston. It's a quick 15 to 20 minute train ride into the city. Thank you for joining me in Wakefield, Massachusetts today. I'm Julie Darkangelo, your host with American Dream TV. See you next time. Welcome to this vibrant and thriving community of Salem, New Hampshire. We are located right on the Massachusetts border, very easy access to Boston, beaches, and mountains. Here you'll discover a variety of local businesses, shops, and restaurants, from family-owned establishments to innovative entrepreneurs. So come with us as we explore some really cool hidden gems of this town that we call home. So we are right now inside Sevmar Mediterranean Bistro, and I am here with the lovely Jocelyn Maroon, formerly of Jocelyn's Restaurant in Salem. And she really had a awesome vision to create such a cool atmosphere here at Sevmar. Do you want to talk about that a no, little bit? No, thank you. 
Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the restaurant that I was at for 14 years, Jocelyn's, it was traditional. My partner and I decided to kind of go bold, be eclectic, make it super intimate. Something new is that uh, it's on social media way more because yeah. you mm. know the drinks smoke and the, they pop. Uh, the food here goes back from old time recipes. Customers will come in and say that our grape leaves and our hummus taste like the way their grandparents used to make it back in the old country. Everything smells delicious, Jocelyn. Why don't you tell us about the dishes we have in front of us? Sure, we have tabbouleh and hummus here. They're traditional starter appetizers here. Uh, tabbouleh, all made from scratch. And here we have hummus. Hummus is chickpeas, sesame, garlic, lemon, olive oil. Those those ingredients, lemon, garlic, olive oil, are pretty much across the board in our food. Here we have meat grape leaves. We also have vegetarian grape leaves for the vegans. Uh, the grape leaf itself is actually from my father's garden. Beef kebab, chicken kebab, kafta, and then our grilled vegetables. From personal experience, as a former employee of Jocelyn, I know all the food is absolutely delicious. Thank you. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the chef? Chef George mm -hmm. is actually in Lebanon right now. He flew out last night. He's going specifically to take some culinary classes. He's going to be bringing back some inspo, some new concepts, the proper way of plating things, and some fresh ideas. So we're excited to introduce those when he gets back. Awesome. Should we try some food? Please, bon appetit, All let's right. go. Thank you so much, Jocelyn, for the tour. Now we're gonna head over to the Tuscan village. Welcome to, to the, the Tuscan, Tuscan village. village. This 170 acre mixed use development features an array of shopping, dining, and entertainment options. And right now, we're on the north side of the Tuscan Village, where these beautiful townhomes have been crafted with an urban city-like feel. And we're going to go into a resale listing right now that's available for your viewing. So come on and let's take a tour. Right now, we're on the main living area of this beautiful townhome. It is very spacious, open concept living, corner unit actually, so there's a ton of sunlight pouring straight through this unit. Downstairs below us, you'll find a two-car garage and an office for easy access. And what I love about this unit is the really tall ceilings and the open concept layout. And when you head upstairs, you'll find two en-suites and each bedroom has walk-in closets and direct entry to their own bathrooms. Thank you so much for coming along today to seeing these really cool little tidbits that Hannah and I just love so much about Salem, New Hampshire. Southern New Hampshire is definitely a place where you would definitely want to live. So come on by and see for yourself all what this town has to offer. Hi, I'm Haley Cutter. And I'm Jen Lanagro from Cutter Lux Living. It's our pleasure today to welcome you to the American Dream. Today we're here in this beautiful historic neighborhood of Beacon Hill at this very special property, 73 Mount Vernon Street. We're starting off today's tour in this chef's kitchen that's great for entertaining, complete with Sub-Zero and Wolf appliances, along with quartz countertops. This penthouse duplex home offers over 2,300 square feet three beds, two and a half baths, and did I mention the most spectacular roof deck with views into Boston, as well as an oversized hot tub and outdoor kitchen. Haley, I love the history of Beacon Hill, and I know that you have definitely brushed up on it. So what can you tell us about this street? Well, Mount Vernon is perhaps the most historic street in all of Boston. Fun fact, in 1795, over 18 and a half acres of land were purchased for less than $19,000, Mount Vernon, Chestnut, and Leeburg Square. We can't even buy a house at this point for that. <laughs> well, Haley, thank you for showing us this amazing unit. Why don't we take a look down now at 1928 Beacon Hill? One of my favorite restaurants, I'd love to. It's right down the street. I'm 
here today with Kristen Jenkins from 1928 Beacon Hill. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks so much for coming, oh, Jen. Thank you for having us. The decor here is absolutely amazing. Thank you. So how did you come up with the inspiration for the decor in here? My family's in the antique business, has been since 1933. A lot of these things I've had in various homes of mine over the years and have in storage. Are there any pieces in here that you would say, you know, are your favorite pieces have some sort of, you know, meaning to you. This smoking gentleman. <laughs> I actually bought that in Amsterdam, having no idea what I was gonna do with it. And it's extremely heavy, so it was expensive to bring back. <laughs> and people come in and name him. So we've had a lot of different names for him. So he's a neighborhood staple, basically. He's a neighborhood staple, <laughs> yes. Um, it is from a cigar company in Amsterdam that was like their original painting of their logo. <laughs> what other pieces would you say are your favorite? The champagne bottle from France, and that was also actually a prototype from the champagne company, I'd say around like 1880. The wallpaper I thought was really neat. This is kind of a fun story. The paint started to bubble up, I noticed, as we were painting and getting ready. Yeah. So I was annoyed by that, but then I started peeling it back and realized it was wallpaper from the 1920s. Oh, that's amazing. Peeled it back and was able to save some sections of it, so that, that was really fun. The mural over on the wall there, that was uncovered, that was covered up, I found it. And that was a mural from the original restaurant, uh, Beauchamp. In an old building, getting open was, had a lot of challenges. But because, a lot of surprises too, apparently. a lot of fun apparently. surprises. And it seems as if the neighborhood loves you guys being here. You're, it's constantly, you know, full. You guys have a great clientele. What would be the number one dish that everybody seems to order here? Mostly, I would say the scallops with risotto is probably the most popular, fresh daily. So everything's brought in fresh, not, not frozen. Well, thank you so much for speaking with thank us you. today. And it was it's been so great fun. to see this amazing restaurant. Thank you. You're welcome. I love having you here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>Thank you so much for joining us on today's episode of American Dream TV. Cuddlelux looks forward to showing you more of Boston's best. See you next time. Bye. Hey everyone, my name is Michelle Furman. I'm the team lead at the Furman Group powered by Century 21 Northeast. And today we are on top of the Real House Oyster Bar in beautiful Seaport. I'm so excited for my team to be able to show you around and show you some of the beautiful spots in this gorgeous neighborhood. I'm Kayla Mendoza with the Firming Group and this is Rachel with Real House Oyster Bar. Nice to meet you, Rachel. Nice to meet you, thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. So I know you guys recently opened. Can you tell us a little bit more about your restaurant? Absolutely. So we opened about two months ago. Perfect timing for the summer here in Boston. Definitely. This is our fifth restaurant that we've opened up on the water. So it's part of Navy Yard Hospitality Group. Well, it's so awesome that you guys are brand new. Thank what you. What makes you a little bit different than the other restaurants here in Seaport? Well, I think two main reasons. One is we are directly on the water. You have so many amazing restaurants in the seaport, but we are truly gonna get splashed while you're sitting outside having a cocktail. The other thing is we really wanted to make an experience here in Boston. So all of our restaurants are right on Boston Harbor. We also started another company called Boston Launch Company, and that is a complimentary water shuttle that will take you to any of our restaurants. You can sit outside and have lunch at one, and then you can pop over and have cocktails at another. Sounds so much fun. It is. I love the idea of being on the water. I'm a water girl myself. Mm -hmm. What is your most popular dish here? So, we are Real House Oyster Bar, so we have a fantastic raw bar. Local oysters, lobster tail, caviar. But what is going to shock everybody is that our pizzas are now getting famous in the seaport and all over Boston. Now, Rachel, thank you so much for having us. Thank you for coming I in. I can't wait to go ahead and try some of the food that you have here and sit outside and enjoy the rest of the summer. Let's do it.
Wow, this is amazing. I love it already. My clients are gonna love this. Oh my gosh, so welcome to Echelon Seaport. This is a beautiful two bedroom, two bath. It is. This one's right around the $2.4 million mm -hmm. mark. Amazing views right here in downtown Seaport. I'm so excited to show this to this you. This is gorgeous. They're, They're gonna, gonna love, love it. it. So we are here at the penthouse on Tower 2. It's beautiful, Michelle. Tell me a little bit more. Absolutely. So this is Tower 2. This one's a little bit over 80% sold out. Yes, and this one's listed right around the $5.6 million mark, uh, a little bit over 2,200 square feet. Okay. Um, upgraded finishes, including the appliances. You probably noticed you have beautiful outdoor private space, floor to ceiling windows, just beautiful light throughout. Beautiful private pools, as you saw. Um, they have the private gyms. It's three gyms, besides the basketball room, besides the golf simulator. Um, and then as you know, there's almost 40 restaurants, bars, and shops. Wow. Uh, which would be really exciting because it gives you that resort feeling. So I never have to leave. You I never have, have to. to leave. I have everything here. You have everything here. Wow. It's literally, you know, the best of the best in Seaport, at least in my opinion. My name is Michelle Furman. I'm the host of American Dream TV. Thank you so much for coming along on this episode of the Echelon Seaport. Until next time. Welcome to the amazing Pelham House Resort on Cape Cod in beautiful Dennisport, Massachusetts. I'm Sarah. And I'm Marty, and we're your host of the American Dream. Today, we're gonna to show you around one of Cape Cod's most spectacular resorts and all it has to offer. Let's go inside. Sarah, Marty, welcome back. John, good to see you. Thank to bring you. back memories. So many great memories it's of our true. wedding. Yes. We always say at the Pelham to end the day by the pool, having a drink, listening to live music, it's incredible. You also have one important thing we oh, always yes. say when you're here. Let's, Let's go! go. I'm here with John McCarthy, the managing partner at the Pelham House. Thanks for having us. This place is near and dear to your heart. I know you have a family history here, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, my dad, Bob McCarthy, he bought the hotel Pelham House in 1997. So I've been here for over 20 years. It started as just a small inn that my dad and I ran for 20 years. He passed away about five years ago. And then since then, I've partnered up with a few people that helped me build kind of where we're at now as a hospitality group. And you've built this amazing building. When did this get built? About five years ago, we had the dream to start with renovating the full Pelham House. Yeah. And then during that renovation, we decided we want to build a wedding venue yes. and a rooftop restaurant. We got married here nine years ago. I was here. 2014, which is crazy. It was incredible. <laughs> but tell us to everyone now about how weddings look now at the Pelham House. Yeah, so the weddings are one of the most amazing features that we have. Yeah. It is a buyout exclusive wedding weekend. So you get to check in and have the whole hotel our main hotel on Nantucket Sound yeah. to yourself for two nights and then we have a complete shutdown of this building here for the whole wedding day on Saturday so the wedding couple gets the whole property on Saturday. Now we don't just have this hotel and this property and these three amazing restaurants yeah. you have now expanded yes. so tell us about the other three amazing things you have going. It started with just this hotel and this building yeah. and then we decided we needed more hotel rooms yeah. so we expanded to West Dennis, okay. Pelham on Main in West Dennis. 27 rooms, totally redone under the Pelham brand, a pool area in the back. That's like our overflow. So everybody who loves to come to the Pelham, yeah. if the Pelham is rented, they can stay there. Or our Pelham on Earl property, which I know you're gonna be We're going gonna by go soon. soon. We just built a brand new 40 seat bar and restaurant. It's called Tide's Kitchen I'm and excited Bar. excited to check it out. We've loved hearing about the Pelham house and all it has to offer. Let's go experience it for ourselves. Let's go up to the rooftop. Can't wait to show you, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Hi, Chef Dan Cote. We're so excited to be here on the beautiful Pelham House rooftop. 
Can you tell us a little bit about this food we have here? So here's our summer brunch menu. We have a smoked salmon bagel right here with a caper and ricotta cream cheese. Here we have a summertime omelet, a zucchini, blistered tomatoes, cheddar cheese, um, our roasted fingling potatoes, and your choice of toast. Underneath us, you have another great restaurant called Waves. I know that we love coming there with the fire pits. It's just a great vibe. What, what's the food like down there? So it's our Asian-inspired restaurant. Honestly, I think it's the best view in the house. Uh, you're looking over Nantucket Sound as you are on the rooftop. Agreed. Uh, we have sushi, flatbread pizzas, a bunch of different appetizers, build your own raw bar, and then a whole area where you can build a sea cootery board. Ooh. Cool. And you still have another restaurant yes. on property called The Pool House. What's the food like over there? So that is our upper scale sandwiches. Uh, we have rice bowls. We have lumpia Shanghai, which is a Filipino egg roll. Palm House burger, chicken sandwich. Uh, fish sandwich, so anything you would think about coming to the Cape Cod and getting with an extra flair on top. Yeah, I love that. We love the live music and mm -hmm. just everything over there. Yes, absolutely. I'm here with Nicole at Palomon Earl, one of Palom's most beautiful brand new hotels. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yeah, welcome. So this is our Harwich location. We got it last year and opened it in the spring of 2022. And we just operated it as a hotel last year. It's a beautiful little hotel that's nestled into a very quaint area of Harwich. Very family friendly hotel. The pool area, we have shuffleboard, we have a fire pit. We're really excited about it. I love it. I'm so excited about this. I think I'm going to grab Marty, hop on the shuttle and go to the Palom House for some live music at the pool. Sounds fun, let's go. Thanks for joining us at the Pelham House Resort. We'll see you next time on the American Dream. Cheers. Welcome to Cape Cod. I'm Amy Harbeck, host of The American Dream. People who love Cape Cod seem to always have a place where they like to go to savor the spectacular natural beauty and the serenity. And one of those places is Little Pleasant Bay. Today, we're going to be speaking with Charles Melcher, whose family has treasured this area for five generations. And we'll also be speaking with Allison Coleman, who is the president of an organization called the Friends of Pleasant Bay. They are working to preserve Pleasant Bay for future generations. So this is Charles Melcher, and his family have a deep connection to this land here near uh, Little Pleasant Bay. Charles, can you tell us a little bit about the history of back in the beginning all the way up to the present day? My great-grandmother, uh, as a hammock, and they came uh, here and, and first started a girls' camp about 1912 or so. First girls' sailing camp on Cape Cod and also possibly the East Coast. That was done for her daughter, so her daughter was quite a sailor. She started a co ed camp. Her mother gave her some land to start the co ed camp next door to the girls' camp. My parents came back here in the 50s to take the camp over from my grandmother and my grandfather. We would play around the house and run down to the bay and you know, get boats ready in the summer. My mom would uh, have to ring a bell to gather us for lunch because she had no idea where we were, <laughs> somewhere out here. Cool. So it was a pretty amazing place to grow up and, uh, uh, and it's still a pretty amazing place. So these are some of the charts of the Cape and show the relationship to where we are from photos of the early Baybirds. Thank you so much, Charles. I see why your family treasures this home so much, along with its magical setting. Now we'll meet someone who shares the same passion for Pleasant Bay. with Allison Coleman, who's the president of the organization called the Friends of Pleasant Bay. And Allison, I just was curious to know how you got inspired to become involved. Well, I have loved Pleasant Bay uh, since I was a child. I learned how to sail uh, when I was about eight out on the bay. 
and it's just been an amazing aspect of my childhood and now my adulthood and I have just admired so much the work that Friends of Pleasant Bay has done over the years and was excited when I had the time to get involved. Great. So what's the mission of the organization? The focus of the organization is really on um, preserving and advocating for the extraordinary environmental, cultural and recreational significance of the Bay. And we have done that by supporting uh, education, public education, um, research, and also land preservation. One of the um, great things that the Friends has done over the last couple years is we designed and uh, built uh, a unique solar-powered floating classroom, which is right out there on the mooring, called the Friend of Pleasant Bay. And we take classes of kids and scientists go out onto the bay and they test water quality and they look at critters and they learn about the ecology of the bay. And it's, um, we think it's the only boat of its kind, a solar powered floating classroom in the United States and there are only two in the world. I want to thank you and your organization for all of your efforts because you are really doing so much to preserve the Bay for future generations. So thank you. Where is your magical place on Cape Cod? Maybe we'll go there next time on The American Dream. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show, produced from America's finest city, but shot in the heart of your neighborhoods. Don't forget positive media when the world really needs it. Follow us on social media at The American Dream TV. See you next time. In the meantime, cheers to your American Dream. So The American Dream is a national TV show centered around real estate, but underneath it all, The American Dream is a, a real show, not a reality show. Let's get real stories out there. I think media is incredibly important in all businesses. giving our agents the tools and secondly the encouragement and show them the successes that other agents are having. We're trying to be the knowledge broker. We're trying to be the educator. I always refer to realtors as community bastards. I believe leadership is the game right now and content is the currency. Like that.